All right. Should we ask Jules what she wants to do? Sure. Would you like to play? Move your body. Juliet, at three days home from the hospital, had her first metabolic crash. Jules picked puzzles. We'll get some puzzles and we'll play outside, okay? Over the next six months, she began to miss milestones and we began the inquiry into why she might not be meeting her milestones. At 10 months old, Mike and Janice Belcher's daughter, Juliet, was diagnosed with something called mitochondrial disease. I don't know how many medicines would you say we have, 20 medicines? At least. It's degenerative and it's incurable, and the causes remain a mystery. Over the past seven years, she is probably the world's most tested child, both through muscle, blood, skin, you name it, and they have still yet to be able to identify the cause of Juliet's disease. At the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, where Juliet has been a patient for the last five years, a breakthrough in genomics may finally bring answers to the Belchers. Juliet has kidney problems and GI problems. She has brain problems. She has some heart rhythm problems. The research study that we were able to do is to start to sequence all of her genes, not one at a time as the knowledge became available of what could cause such things, but really all of them. The new test is called whole exome sequencing and it promises a breakthrough in diagnostics for patients like Juliet. In the past, you know, diagnostic rates were, you know, below 20 percent. So the fact that by one single test, you could diagnose maybe half of people as complex as Juliet, not all with the same disease, but with the cause of their problems, is huge. In one fell swoop, the test can sequence all of Juliet's genes at the same time. This is um, Juliet's DNA. This has never been possible before. This rich data is compared to the exomes of Juliet's parents and other mitochondrial disease patients, allowing doctors to zero in on the likely mutation causing Juliet's disease. So you can really do personalized medicine, not what is it that is in the community causing mitochondrial disease, but what is it in her? To put this in perspective, the human genome was decoded in 2003 for just under $3 billion. The new test achieves the same thing and more routinely for under $7,500, and the prices are rapidly coming down. We're gonna measure on your head. Can we do that to you? Are you gonna be happy? This to me is sort of the discovery of antibiotics, you know, and how that affected um, humans' health down the road. Here's our normal set, and no pits or tags. Dr. Ian Krantz is a pediatric geneticist at the hospital and he's using the test for his patients with gene-based hearing loss. Um, what the research testing is going to do is look at all of the genes. He says it represents the start of a paradigm shift in medicine. Being able to sequence your genes, either through a genome or exome sequencing, gives us kind of the blueprint or ground plan of who we are medically. And that means whole exome sequencing has diagnostic powers way beyond the specific disease being tested. It's a great tool in terms of finding a diagnosis, but at the same time, we will not only find, hopefully, the gene that causes the symptoms you're looking at, but you will find everything else. That everything else is called incidental information, and it can reveal a lot about your future health risks to everything from cancer to heart disease, and even someday to Alzheimer's. And this, Dr. Kranz says, raises some thorny issues. Our families who will agree to do this in the best interest of their child, for example, in pediatrics, be upset with the type of information they're getting back? Or will they be very happy with that information? We don't know. And one of the reasons for doing the study is to see how it impacts both the clinicians and the families to get. Recently, the National Institute of Health awarded the hospital with a grant to study how patients and families cope with all this new information. Yes, little one. I love it. But for the Belchers, there's no such thing as too much knowledge. We would definitely want to know more uh, than maybe most people would want to know about our daughter because of her, her current illness. We want, want to know more about ourselves as well as we prepare to care for her as, um, and hopefully as an adult um, who is completely dependent on us for her care. So if I have a proclivity towards something, you know, in the next 10 years, I'd like to be able to prepare for that as well. Here we go. And the Belchers will soon have that knowledge. 
because Dr. Falk says the test is revealing some surprising things about Juliet's disease. I think Juliet has a mutation in a gene that has never been associated with a human disease, but um, it does make very good sense, once you understand what that gene does, that it would cause her specific constellation of features. Hi. <laughs> Are you riding your bike? So I guess the power of whole exome sequencing is that it's making everybody um, revisit um, our assumptions of what we know to be true about different categories of disease, um, and it's really expanding our understanding of our patients and of the disease. We're grateful, really grateful for all of the, the doctors and nurses who have helped us over the years to find a, a way to care for her and manage her symptoms, and we always have hope. Every day, there's going to be another great thing that she does.